Okay, well one of the questions that I'm commonly asked about making crankbaits is what wood to use. And it's a really excellent question because just as choosing the right wood for making your crankbaits can make them absolutely brilliant lures, choosing the wrong wood can make them an absolute disaster. And that's not to say that there's only one type of wood that you can use. There are dozens and dozens of timbers that can be used to make crankbaits, but you just have to recognize some of the important attributes uh, that are required to make a really good crankbait and choose your timber accordingly. So what I'm going to do now is just walk you through a couple of the key things that I always recommend to beginners when they're starting out making crankbaits and they're trying to decide what timber to use. And the first piece of advice I always give is use the lightest weight timber you can find but it still has to be pretty strong. You obviously don't want a lure that's going to break at the side of a large fish. And the reason I like lightweight timbers is that in this example, if you imagine this is a lure that's been cast out, <coughs> it's made from a fairly dense timber. And by the time you add paint, by the time you add clear coat, by the time you add hooks and rings and all that kind of stuff, that bait is floating just, just above the water surface. <coughs> now the problem with that is that to get the maximum stability out of our crankbaits, to really get the best action and have the most control and, and the greatest range of cranking speeds, sometimes you need to add a little bit of weight to the belly of the lure. Now if your lure is already barely floating, then doing that's going to turn it into a sinking lure. And that may be fine, but quite often we're not after a sinking lure. On the other hand, if you start out with a lightweight timber, there's plenty of scope there to add a little bit of weight to the lure. <clears throat> which allows you then to have greater control over the action, greater control over the stability of the lure. And what gives us that, that greater action, what gives us that control, is the difference in density between the shoulder of the lure and the belly of the lure. And if you're using a timber that's um, fairly dense and you can't add a lot of weight to the belly of the lure, then you finish up with not a great gradient there. So the action of the lure tends to be a little less stable. So I guess in summary, what low density wood gives us is a really clean, crisp, strong action to the lure. And quite often, using a low density wood, you get a better action than what you can get out of plastic lures. The second thing it gives us is the ability to carry uh, <coughs> heavier hooks and rings if we want to. So for example, if you were making a bait that was going to be used around heavy structure and, and on heavy tackle, and you really want to be able to wrestle fish out, then by using a lighter, a lighter weight timber to make the lure body, you can get away with using slightly heavy hooks and rings. It does deaden the action of the lure a little bit, but you can still do it. Whereas with a, a, a more dense timber, you can't even do that. Using a lightweight timber gives us the ability to put lead or put weight into the lure wherever we want it, which gives us much greater control over the balance, overall balance of the lure and allows us to really tweak the performance. And believe it or not, I know it sounds counterintuitive, but Using uh, lightweight wood makes uh, much better sinking and suspending baits than what a, a heavier wood does. And sure, you've got to add a little bit more weight to them, but it's, again, it's that density gradient between the shoulder of the lure and the belly of the lure that will give you a much better outcome. And of course, low density wood tends to be much easier to carve because uh, there's a lot less um, <coughs> cellulose and a lot less um, hard matter there to carve away. So what is the ideal density? Well, there's quite a range. I try and stick with timbers that are less than 40 pounds per cubic foot, or in the metric system that's 650 kilos per cubic meter. Now you, you can go a little bit above that um, if, if you want to, but I always find that I get much better results the lower the density of the timber. <coughs> and I've put on the bottom of this page a, um, a URL for a website uh, that will provide information about the density of a whole range of timbers worldwide. So if, you, if you're looking at experimenting with a new timber, have a look here first and you might find some information about the density of that wood. If it's not there, of course, do a bit of a Google and, and find out what the density is before you start carving. So just looking at the density of some popular crankbait making timber as well. You know, balsa is the lightest timber in the world, so it's about 7 to 9 pounds per cubic foot, or 160 kilograms per cubic metre. And then it goes up from there. So Western Red Cedar, which is my personal favourite lure making wood, <coughs> is around about the 23 pounds per foot sort of a range. Now Western Red Cedar is great because it's a very lightweight wood, but it's also very strong and it's a little bit more resistant to denting than balsa. Basswood is a very popular lure making wood in particularly the, the US. Uh, 
where I make my lures, it's not readily available, so I don't use it all that often. Likewise, an aspen yellow cedar, but yeah, they're well known and popular um, crankbait making timbers. Now, the next thing I look for is straight closed grain. And when I say straight, I mean you don't want timber with knots in it. You don't want timber that's got wavy grain or interlocking grain because it's hard to carve. <clears throat> and because the um, the harder parts of the wood are also more dense, so the, the lure can be uh, out of balance if it's got knots in it. And closed grain, well, we don't want really porous timber because it adds an extra step in the process. With a porous timber, you've got to go and fill the grain before you can start painting. That takes extra time and extra work. Straight grain timber carves predictably, and that makes your, your lure making much easier, makes it faster, makes it much more uh, enjoyable to do. As I've said, closed grain means less preparation before you paint. You get that even weight distribu distribution, so your lures are more balanced, and that means that they'll work over a wider range of cranking or trolling speeds. And of course, with a straight grain, you don't have short grain, so um, you get stronger, more durable baits that are less likely to get broken. And I guess the final thing I want to talk about is you know, using well-seasoned straight and square wood. Now you'll hear me say this over and over and over again, and I make no apology for it. Because in, in all the years that I've been making crankbaits, I can say without hesitation that the number one reason why most homemade crankbaits don't work properly is because people start out with wood that's not square. And if your wood's not square, it's very difficult to cut a slot for a diving lip that's perfectly aligned. It's very difficult to get the toe point and the hook hangers perfectly aligned. If you start out with square wood, it's much easier to do. But the other reason for using well seasoned wood is that it, it means that your paint will last longer. So just imagine here we've got a, a lure body that we've just carved out of a piece of um, poorly seasoned wood. It's still got a little bit of moisture in it. So what we then do is we give it a coat of paint. And over a period of time, the moisture in that wood starts to move towards the surface. But of course, it gets to that paint film, and that paint film is impermeable, so the water's trapped beneath the paint. The next time you bring your lure out in the sun, the next time you leave it in a warm car, the next time it's it's on a boat where um, you know on, on a warm day, what will happen is that that water that's trapped beneath the paint film will start to vaporise, and as it does, it expands and it pushes the paint away from the wood. And when it does that, you get little blisters and bubbles. Now, sometimes these are visible, sometimes they're so small that they're not visible. But in any case, over a period of time, what tends to then happen is that those bubbles and blisters break. And what you finish up with then is exposed bare wood. Once you've got exposed bare wood, then every time you cast your lure into the water, that water can absorb into the timber and it can exacerbate the problem even further. And eventually what you find is that your paint starts to lift off the lure. <clears throat> so using well-seasoned timber will ensure that your baits are durable, or that they last longer, that the hard work you put into painting them will last longer. Now I always prefer kiln dried plantation timber. I like kiln dried because it's a very, very controlled process so you know exactly, you know for certain that the, the timber is completely dry. But also I use plantation timber because I like the idea of using a renewable resource rather than using a rainforest timber. Now, if you do use air-dried timber, that's fine. But keep in mind that to be really stable, air-dried timber needs to be seasoned for at least two years. And once it's been seasoned for two years, then you can start to plane it, square it up and chew it up, and, and start to make lures out of it. But for mine, kiln-dried timber is by far the best choice. Okay, some great crankbait woods. I've already mentioned some of these. Balsa is always a classic. Um, I mean, even you know, Rapala use, use balsa. It's a great, easy wood to carve. It has a brilliant, crisp action in lures. The main downfall of balsa is that it's a bit soft, which means that it does dent fairly easily. It does get chewed up by toothy, toothy critters. I'll talk a little bit more later on about um, some ways to, to make balsa a little bit tougher. But um, look, it is, it is a great lure making timber. Lots of different cedars. I use western red cedar because that's the most available where I live. But Eastern Red and Alaskan Yellow Cedar, they work fine. <coughs> Moranti works quite well. Um, the main problem with Moranti is it's a little bit porous, and you do have to be careful to get um, some of the lighter lighter planks. Sometimes Moranti can be a little bit dense and heavy, so avoid those planks that are 
Yeah, a little bit heavy. Um, basswood, as I mentioned, is not one that I've used extensively, but it is used very commonly in, in crankbait making, and it's very good for this uh, particular pursuit. There are various pines you can use. I use radiata from time to time, uh, and jellyatong if it's easy to get where you where you live. But um, by all means, it's, it's a superb lure making timber. <laughs>